this video, I'm going to show you how to use Copilot Studio to do something called dynamic chaining. So the first thing you might be asking yourself is, what is dynamic chaining and what is Dwayne going on about here? Dynamic chaining is this concept that allows you to be able to be able to describe all the different assets that are available to your custom agent that you've built, but then allow a large language model to understand the context of the conversation, the information that it has at its disposal, whether it's a topic or an API or other things, and be able to dynamically come up with a plan on how to assemble those different assets to be able to answer the question. It's best if I give you guys the video link that where I go over the concept of dynamic chain. So if you want more information on it, you can just click the link that I'm going to provide here, but you can also continue on in this particular video because I'm going to walk you through some high level concepts of this. So if I first start with making sure we all understand the major components of Copilot Studio, you can think of it that we have topics, which are custom authored experiences that you're going to build inside a Copilot Studio. You have knowledge, which is basically, think of it as unstructured data or rag pattern type of scenarios where I want to be able to say, here's a piece of content that I want to make available that we could use as knowledge so that I can do a search and summarization over it. And then we have actions. Actions are this concept of being able to wrap an API or a Power Automate connector or a Power Automate flow or a bot framework skill. You just wrap that thing so that you can talk to it like it's a human. So think of it as like this conversational wrapper. And all of this stuff I've covered on my channel, channel many times before. But you're going to start to see the reason why model descriptions that are associated to these three major components are going to be so important as we go forward. But I'm also even going to go into some variables where we start using variables and defining variables as inputs and outputs. And if you don't know what a variable is, it's simply information I'm going to store in the conversation state for me to be able to use later to be able to adapt the conversation or to be able to store this information for reuse later on. These are going to be key concepts as we go forward in dynamic chaining. So another key concept that you have to understand to really be able to watch and understand like what's going on with dynamic chaining is you need to understand that Copilot Studio itself is a dialogue management stack or a conversational orchestrator. I've got numerous conversations about this on my channel. So just be aware, you can definitely go check out that to dive deeper in this. But in a sense, it's basically think of it that Copilot Studio, as part of the SaaS platform that we offer in that space, is going to automatically be able to figure out how to route the conversation. You can kind of think of it that if I say A, then go to topic A. If I say B, maybe I go to knowledge item B. And if I say C, maybe I don't know what you said and I escalate you to a live agent. The understanding that there is this orchestration engine that needs to figure out what is the right asset and being able to orchestrate you to it is a key concept of dynamic chaining. Now there's this new concept of something that we call the planner inside of Copilot Studio. Now whether or not that's the official name or whatever, I'll just call it the planner for now. And the planner is this new capability inside of Copilot Studio that allows you to be able to use a large language model to do intent routing and entity extraction, but it is the thing that is the superpower that allows dynamic chaining to happen. And it allows for you to be able to look at things like, instead of just search over everything I have access to and then try to come up with an answer over that, can actually start routing to knowledge. So I can start to say knowledge can be orchestrated to just like a topic or an action can be orchestrated to. So now it's the copilot understands all the assets and its function. But the other thing is that makes it also where a large language model can pass the context in to be able to determine what you need to do. Where an old style language model it would just take the last thing you said and try to figure it out. Now we can pass the whole context of the conversation into this. And because of that, you can do things like follow-up questions. So when you're talking about something, 
You can ask a follow-up question about the thing you're talking about, and it will take that into consideration on how it orchestrates the conversation and grabs the correct assets to be able to do that. Now, the other thing is that when we're doing this, it's going to build something called a plan, and that plan is how it's figuring out what are the different combinations of things it needs in order to be able to answer the question or to service the request. So you're going to need some new different types of triggers. You're going to need a trigger to be able to handle things once the plan's done. And then there's also the fact that maybe you don't want to generate a response. So what we're going to also be looking at is coming soon, there will be an ability for you to be able to say, I want to grab um, the response before it's summarized of the plan and then allow you to be able to customize the response versus just summarizing the answer. It'll make more sense as we see it work. So now let's go into Copilot Studio and let's take a look at a few different aspects of this particular demo environment that I have for you here. And then we'll get into showcasing how the planner works and how all of this stuff all comes together for dynamic chaining. So the first thing is I want you to see that I have built a Copilot here. I haven't really given any description, but I don't need it for this particular demo. But what I have done is given it some assets. I've given it some knowledge, such as a, the company travel policy. And here you can see I've given a model description about what this particular piece of knowledge is. We can also go back and we can see that another thing that I have here is I have the weather. And the weather API is going to also have uh, things as well. So I've converted it into an action. You can see here that we've got a description of what it does. We have inputs defined on different things like the location needs to be collected and outputs with model descriptions on what are all the different outputs that this can provide. But we've also got a couple of other things and that is we also have different topics that are inside of this. And I'm gonna focus on just the create PO topic really quick for you to take a look at this because one of the things you're gonna notice is that I really don't have much complication in this. I just basically have a trigger and then I have a power automate flow. And you can see that there's a lot of variables that I'm collecting here. So let's take a look inside of here and you can see that this just has a basic description and I've got the actions. Now, there is a video I have where I go over topic level inputs and you'll notice that I've got inputs defined. So I've got supplier uh, name, I've got uh, payment terms, and I've got an explanation of what all these inputs are. But I'm also using something called an output. And in the output, you can see that it, I, this thing is going to generate a PO number, and you can see that I give it that explanation. So now that we've seen all of this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump back over, and I'm going to show you how now what we can do, which we haven't been able to do in the past, which is super, super innovative, is that we can actually now route to knowledge. And if you ever want to see the planner work, you can click this button right here and you'll see the planner actually on this left-hand side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop in a question here. Can I book a first-class ticket uh, for my business trip? And when I ask this question, what's going to happen is you're going to see the planner on the left start to figure out what it is that I'm trying to do. And it realizes, I need to actually get that information from knowledge. And when it goes and it grabs it, it's going to return the information from knowledge to be able to bring it in. And you can see it do it right here where I've got the actual information and it went and grabbed that. Now, this is nice, but there's also the fact that what I might want to do is do something called dynamic chaining. And when we talk about dynamic chaining, dynamic chaining means that I'm going to take something from one asset and use it to get information from a different asset. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop in this question, which is what is the address to the Microsoft HQ and what is the weather there? And so I'm asking it to go find that information and in knowledge, take that information out of knowledge of the location and provide it into weather. So we'll go ahead and pass this through and watch it work on the left hand side here. You'll see here that it, what it does is it understands it's going to have to go get something for knowledge. You'll see that what it did is it pulled the knowledge information from the Microsoft website. And then 
it went here, automatically grabbed the information that Redmond, Washington is the, where the headquarters is for Microsoft, and then it po automatically pushed that into the input for the weather API. And as a result, what you got was back over here is a summarization of the information about this. And I could ask follow-up questions and all of that, but you can see now that dynamic chaining is going to be able to allow me to be able to not necessarily have all the information that I need just in one asset. It can actually use multiple assets and you can also see that now it can summarize all of the response to you in a single node back. Now this is great, but we can actually even go further with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and clear this out and let's go back and take a look really quick at our topics that I had created. And notice that I have this create PO topic here. And what I wanna do is I wanna showcase some of the other capabilities that the planner is going to give us. And one of them is going to be that you can see here that I have an explanation of what this does. And again, we've got inputs defined just like as if it was an API and I've given instructions on what each of these different things are. So you can see here that the payment terms, I'm explaining what payment terms are and things of that nature. And you'll notice that I don't have any question nodes, but I can trigger this thing. So we'll go ahead and go into the test. I'll fire this up um, so that you can watch the planner work. And we're going to do this. We're going to actually say to it that we want to create a PO. Now what should happen here is we should see that the planner is going to look at this and say, oh, I need to create a PO. Notice that it's saying, I need to collect this information because we defined inputs. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start providing the information that it's looking for. And notice on the left that it's going to start filling this in, but it's also going ahead and it's asking me these questions, but it's generating the questions off of the description of the things that I needed uh, to collect in order to be able to do this. So that's where we're using those variable inputs. Now, one of the cool things that happens when you have a planner or a dynamic chaining capability is that you can see here, it's asking me a question. I've got numerous things where I've already answered questions and I've got multiple questions I need to continue to answer. But imagine if you wanted to say something much more complicated, like maybe I wanna go backwards and correct something I've already said. Like in this case, I say 90 days originally, but I wanna change it to 120 days. But then I also wanna jump ahead and provide additional information if I know I'm going to need it, such as the value of the PO, and I wanna provide the shipping information all in one statement. What's going to happen is when I do this, it's going to dynamically go fill this information in and you'll see that it goes ahead and it comes back with a response and gives me the information about the PO number um, that we wanted to do. Now, I could turn around and I could say something uh, like this, where can you approve this PO? And because I have a PO approval process, you'll see that it'll take the context of the information and automatically pass it in and approve it. But we can actually do a little bit more complex type of thing because we want to showcase dynamic chaining. And so dynamic chaining would be the concept where it just automatically does all of this for me, passing uh, inputs and outputs together to be able to get the result. So let's make a little bit of a change in our topic. Let's go back up to our, approve, our creation topic, rather. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add some additional text into this. And I'm gonna give it some additional instructions. And what I'll do is I'll clear this conversation and I'll pause here just so that I can zoom in and let you see what I added here. So I'm adding information that allows you to be able to give additional instructions and additional behavior in context about something you might want done. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this so that this way I'm training the whole large language model to be aware of this instruction set that I'm gonna pass into the planner. So now whenever I come in, 
I can do something much more interesting uh, whenever I do this. And so I'm not going to go back and, and say the same questions that I did over and over before. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you one that's just going to go ahead and answer all the questions it's going to need. And I'm going to pass this in as, uh, as a query. And we'll see on the left, we'll actually see it go out. It will go and create the PO number that we need and then automatically pass that PO number information in for the approval system and be able to not just do one thing, but dynamically chain it and pass it down and get the approval. So you can see here that this has actually been automatically approved. Now, I'll give you a little bit of insider information here, and that is what I actually have built here is a Power Automate flow that looks at the value of the PO, and depending upon if it's over $1,000 or not, it will take a different action uh, according to that. So what will happen is if it's over $1,500, it needs to get approved. So I'm going to show you something that you can do with dynamic chaining because, again, we haven't made any changes here. But watch this thing be able to take care of this type of action. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying I need to create two POs. Uh, for Microsoft, one for $750 and one for $1,500. Both ship DHL and have 60-day terms. And watch on the left as it goes through and the dynamic chaining and the planner figure out how it's going to handle this. It goes out and creates the first PO. Then it creates the second PO. Then it goes in and says, I need to actually get an approval for each of these. And it gets the first one auto-approved, but this one actually is over 1500 So it's over 1000 so it needs to actually kick the Power Automate approval process off and get the information from Power Automate about the approval, grab that information back, and then summarize it all back in one particular summary of what was actually done. This is where Dynamic Chaining is doing all of this, and we didn't actually program this copilot or this custom agent to do this. This is the power of the actual uh, large language model being able to do dynamic chaining and the planner being able to execute in this particular way. So I hope this video was super helpful and you guys really enjoyed the content here. I will make this particular demo available as a download in the notes below. So if you want that, go check it out. If you also, please make sure you subscribe and like my channel and if you ever want to try this out for yourself, go to aka.ms slash try Copilot Studio.